everybody, welcome back to another episode of Xenogears. Let's see, last time we won a tournament, infiltrated the castle, and we're rescuing this little girl with the big hat. So, let's continue on, shall we? Alright, nice and easy. Uh-oh. So that's not cool, right? Gabbler. So this was fast. Um, I wanted to get this done in the last episode, but we took a little bit too long checking out the castle and everything like that, but no big deal. So this is the big boss fight I was talking about, and uh, this one can suck if you're not prepared and if you don't pick up on the gimmick very quickly. I mean, there's not really much of a gimmick, but um, this guy could be tough. Oh, he pulled out the sword, armor girt. Cool scene transition. You haven't. I don't think we've seen one like that yet. No, Miang, and she knows exactly who I am. And he's like, Bart smash, Bart smash. And then he's got to deal with her. It's one of your, uh, one of your audio recordings. Either way is bad. <laughs> Time for a fight! Margie is clutch in this fight. That's kind of a silly thing to say, but shut up. So first thing we want to do is reduce this guy's accuracy because holy shit does that go a long way towards survivability. And we've got Margie here doing healing, but uh, he also has Miang or Miang or whatever also doing healing. Alright, so... Start off fucking around a little bit, but we'll start using death blows here very shortly. So, the reason that we equipped the Cobra Kraka in the last episode, and the reason we went out of our way to look for it, is because my Miang, Miang, whatever, um, all she does is heal Ramses. And if his ass is, uh, Wow. Good job. Ah, oh, She keeps removing the accuracy debuff. Um, but if he has some sort of status on him, either poison or uh, accuracy, uh, she will heal his status instead of healing his actual health. So as long as Margie can actually get her... Uh, heals in and actually get me with the heal. We can uh, hopefully get through this without too much trouble. Oh shit, that was fast. So Faye out of nowhere comes and punches that guy in the mouth. You okay, Bart? Glad you're here, Faye. Jerk butted in and slowed me down. I like that. So, uh, this is interesting. Um, the commander of Gebler knows who the fuck, or <laughs> finds an uncanny resemblance between Faye and whoever the fuck this guy is who's killing gears by fucking hitting them. And how cool is that? Oh, that looks familiar. Oh shit. He done punched the ground. I feel like with deliberate flashbacks like that, this game gives away way too much. Now he's ready to keep fighting. So the 
idea behind that fight is, if you're at a regular level and you haven't ground out levels and death blows, etc., like if this is your first time playing through, that was supposed to be really, 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 really hard. Not only was that supposed to be really hard, like just with Bart, you're supposed to barely be able to get through it. Um, and then Faye comes in, and this is supposed to be where the actual fight begins. He doesn't have that many hit points in the first phase, to be honest. I don't know why I'm doing that. I should just be doing using death blows on this guy. Hey, you actually healed me a little bit. But the idea is that Bart can barely manage this guy, then Faye comes in, and you have an easier time of it. But as you could see, Bart really had no problem with the fight at all. So here's a place where, uh, like I said, the real fight begins. Ramses get his, gets his full move list, which includes a mirror stance where he'll do a crazy counterattack if you actually physically hit him. I'm pretty sure ethers don't trigger it. I'm pretty sure it's only physical attacks that trigger it. She's restoring him even though his stuff is down. So let's try an ether and see if that causes any problems with the mirror stance. Nope. And she's healing him for nothing because he's fully healed. So this fight's kind of a joke at this point where we are. Um, with our character levels and my knowledge of the fight. Oh, no. I did shot. You ain't shit, Ramses. So obviously she's doing a ton of healing to this guy at this point. I should probably be using Heaven Sense as Bart to mitigate some of her healing, but here we are. Oh wow, I'm out of EP. Let's see, Rosa Soul restores 10, restores 20, why not? Not using it anywhere else. Those will become more important later in the game, when money really won't be an issue due to me uh, grinding off camera. So, at this point, we can start attacking with Faye again. That's a really cool attack. Faye gets some really awesome... ...kind of strange attacks later on, to be perfectly honest, but it's still really cool. Also, notice at this point, Ramses has become... ...not immune, but highly resistant to Bart's poison attack. That's kind of a pain, but it's not too big of a deal. Uh, because even though Namiang is restoring his health, the fact is, like, we've doubled the damage output with two characters on our side. Uh, so it's, it's not even a real, like, damage versus healing race at this point. I figure that. We're basically, per round, doing about 400 damage. Doing just over, I think, actually. And then with Margie, with her clutch missed heals. It's a joke. Margie, you're fucking up. Normally, she's a lot better in this fight. Like how the camera angle for that goes behind the damn thing. Is it just my imagination? So he actually has, well, and there's your giveaway. If you missed that, too bad. I guess it's a video, so you can go back and watch. But um, there is a, uh, they give, I feel like they hint at it way too hard. Like it's explicit. Hey, look, we beat we beat the fight. We did it with rats. Rats are to ween. Worthless, a reject. Not don't let them escape. Don't let them in again. They hint at a lot early on, but they don't really deliver 
like, a sit-down explanation until later, so... If y'all didn't... catch the implications there, which there's no way you could've, because... it involves characters and plot that hasn't been introduced yet, but, like... Just remember, go back to part... What, what part is this? Eight? Fae won! Um... That dialogue is different if Fae doesn't win. Um, but once certain things are introduced way later on, come back to here, and you'll get your idea of what the fuck's going on here. That's a big-ass ship. It's only one of them. An entire company of bros is running after us. So we aren't actually, I'm not actually controlling this here, this is done on its own. I can control the camera so I can look back and be like, look at these assholes running at us in single file. And then because of the way the loading screen works, it actually hits us. Oh god, it's Ellie. Ellie is here. The two men may be killed, but do not harm the girl. I'm still stuck on these shitty accents. Hopefully it's spaced far enough apart for y'all to not hate it too much. <sighs> Delicious water. Remember to stay hydrated, kiddos. Oh shit, it's almost 10. I should be having some damn food by now. You know what? I'm gonna break a cardinal rule here. I'm gonna eat on camera. Just a little snack. Just a little jam some food in my mouth. So, bear with me. Bart's completely right. Ray's being a dumb, naive idiot. Ellie sure is super nice, though. Proving Bart wrong, but still, Faye, you're stupid. Mm. The height of unprofessionalism. Delicious trail mix. So Bart here is being an idiot. Because back in the, back in the underground base, the fact that Satan fucking knew everything, and the fact that Satan and Faye are clearly as powerful as officers in the enemy military, um, is pretty fucking suspect when you're trying to run basically a guerrilla resistance against uh, a regime. That uh, basically killed your family and ousted you from from power. And at this point, Bart should be ready to kill Faye, because now it's like, oh, he just knows he just knows Gebler officers, so you know, like the fact that he's asking for an explanation here, it he's 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 not suspicious enough. Because all Bart really knows about Faye, his background anyways, is what Satan has told him, right? All he knows is that we were from a, a village that nobody's heard of, and it got blown up and we're running from Gebler. So we should hang out with you. 
Uh, but his allegiance is never really questioned because Bart just really wants a friend, I think. Um, but anybody else with any sort of sense, like common sense, should be looking at Faye like you're like some super deep cover fucking guy trying to get something out of y'all. Like, we know at this point about Bart that, one, he's the heir to the, the Fatima throne. Two, he and Margie, who are now together, um, each have one half of the Fatima Jasper, which unlocks some incredible power. Um, and now Faye and Satan have showed up and have started enabling him to... <laughs> basically bring together these two halves of the Fatima Jasper and then he leads them unwittingly into the heart of the Gebler base in Bledovic. So like if I was Bart I would be grabbing Margie and fucking running at this point because Faye is the single most effective like espionage agent period at this point because like, if this was his and Satan's plan, it's been orchestrated perfectly, you know? I guess the only thing... And obviously this isn't coming up in the story, except for the fact that Bart doesn't trust Ellie. Um, <clears throat> but obviously, you know, Faye seriously just helped beat the crap out of the commander of Gebler. And so, you know, to Bart, that seems like he's on the level because he's saving him. But, I mean, that's just the exact type of work you would expect from a swerve character in a JRPG. And the fact that we're playing as him, and the commander of Gebler recognizes him, should be sending up a red flag to the player saying maybe he's so deep cover he gave himself amnesia, which... I'm not going to lie, isn't the case, and that it's never really touched on. But, like, I just think it's wild that that type, that that was never really explored in this story, and it was brought up almost as kind of a joke. Um, I don't think it takes away anything from the overall story, but just as, like, a, you know, somebody who's used to the normal JRPG plots, which this is. It's a it's a fairly standard JRPG plot. Um, the fact that nothing like that is ever set up is wild. But what are you going to do? I feel like I'm criticizing the writing in this game where I actually enjoy the writing. Up to the point where the game ran out of money and then the writing becomes just like, sit down and talk to you for an hour or more. So I was thinking, after I recorded the last episode, I was thinking about all the stuff that's coming up. And I've been really enjoying the past, like, Five episodes that I've recorded. Four or five. Four. The last four episodes I've recorded. I've really enjoyed them. Um, well, because I really enjoy this game, yeah. Um, but it's also, it's just really, it it's really good pacing. And it's really good storytelling and obviously the combat and the exploration is fun it's just a really good game it's a great game and i was thinking about all the stuff that's coming up and there's a slow part that's coming up where the pacing is kind of jarring to be perfectly honest um but then it's followed by what i consider one of the best parts of the game like bledovic was really lively but we get into a really really cool really good story sequence that lasts five or six hours 
not a couple hours from now, so a couple episodes from now. Um, and so I'm really excited for you guys, if you've never seen this game before, to actually see it and check it out. This is cool. You get shot out of the side of the mountain. Or, excuse me. And so, like, just thinking about what's ahead from this game, from Hugh? That name's important. Pay attention to that name. Um, like, the amount of, like, good stuff that's coming up is fantastic. Like, it's, it's just wild thinking ahead what all is going to be in this LP. The game's great. It's great, great. It's great. This part's kind of sad. Please don't be so hard on her. So Shikan is abducting and executing high-ranking people from one of the predominant religions on this continent uh, which should give you an idea how reprehensible he is. Because there isn't too much characterization to him other than he's clearly a puppet of Gebler at this point. And yeah, he's in charge of the nation, but he's clearly just, you know, being strung along by Gebler and he's trying to break out from that. And he kicked out, or he, you know, had a coup d'etat of the nation of Ave and took over and kicked out the royal family. But, like, that's one of the... This part right here is one of the strongest characterizations, is that... And you're going to learn more about the Nissan religion here over the next couple hours. But, um... Yeah, that's one of the strongest characterizations of him, is the fact that he's just, you know, abducting and executing clergy from... Yeah... So, you don't get to go up here often. In fact, you never get to go up here when you're out on, like, the world map or anything, so. There you go. We're out in the desert. It's very hot. According to the air moving over the, the little wing back there, we are uh, moving, so let's go inside. Alright, so now we get some dumb bullshit. Y'all ready for some dumb bullshit? He literally cannot move it himself. Oh god! Something yelled. Let's ask Margie to get rid of it. <sighs> Such good music in this game. I was thinking last night about all the Celtic influences in this. There's two... Like, obviously you've got... Uh, this, I can't remember what it's called, not pixelated, it's not chiptune music, but this, like, MIDI music, I guess is what it would be called. I mean, let me know. But there's two actual tracks, two actual songs in this game. One never gets used, um, but is basically the vocalization of the uh, world map theme. And the other one is the end credits. Um, and you really get these strong Celtic influences from those songs there. But the entire, almost the entire 
soundtrack has Celtic influence to it. And I do, I own the soundtrack, and, I mean, obviously each one is like, you know, a little jingle like this that's on like a minute and 30 second loop or whatever. Okay, now we get to name this fucking thing. So what should we name it? Uh, let's name it, uh, the Damn, it fits perfectly, so subscribe. Subscribe to the channel. <laughs> I'm an idiot, I know. Her name is Subscribe! <laughs> Forever. Oh god, it's alive! Look at it! Nice to meet you, Subscribe. Oh no. This is, um... This is some dumb bullshit. Because we found out the little pink Ewok is alive, and it wants to smash Faye. And he's just like, he can't handle it. <laughs> Bart loves it. Bart's like, yeah, smash! I'll hold the camera! We can put it on the Xenogears web! Oh god, I wonder if there's rule 34 of this. Oh god. Oh god. I know what I'm doing after I finish recording. Get the lotion out. Faye X Choo Choo. Best ship. I don't know. <laughs> I'm fucking sorry. Fucking Faye. Fucking Bart. Being a bastard. Now we get to talk to Margie. <clears throat> yep, I did the best. I'm so ashamed. There's more characterization of these two. So Bart's a dumb kid. What you got to say, Choo Choo? Or subscribe. Oh! And give her spiders. Or she took the spider. The spider I grabbed in like episode one or two. So. Uh, we just got an incredibly powerful gear item. Um. From that just from giving her a spider so everything I do in the, the thing probably has some some level of importance to it um, it's actually like that stuff you would never know unless you went through the trouble of doing all the crap um, all right so now Karan Ramses. Commander in chief. They wouldn't need to send an important man like him. Oh, yeah, Doc fucked off to somewhere after the tournament. And we ain't got no idea. Also, Sigur just referred to him as Hugh. Um, that's important. Because Ramses was also talking about Hugh. So, all that shit I said about Faye might actually be true about Saiten. 
Yeah, you launched that Yggdrasil, boy. Alright, so we are gonna can carry right on to this Hyaw. There's the hideout over there. But we need to go over here to this tree. So this is this is a cool little like secret path that goes underneath this channel, I guess, over to this island where Nissan is. So for a band of ragtag pirates, this is important. We're getting a little backstory on these guys, but it's not going to be explained now. It'll get explained later, but... The MLA ate on Kara's side, and he said that she had indigo blue eyes and hair, so it must be her! So apparently, Satan, Ziggurd, uh, Ramses, and Miang were all elements which means fucking something it'll be explained later not in her what not in her I don't know. right So clearly, Solaris, the country that Gebler is from, is pulling some strings here. And Satan was there. He was just fucking there. Which is a big deal. It's a bigger deal than it's made to be here. And if you're unfamiliar with it, and this is the first time that you've seen this, you wouldn't know. You don't find out how big a deal it is to get to Solaris until later. Uh, but that's a story for another time, and I'm not going to try and spoil anything, I'm just trying to provide a little bit of background for what's going on here. Um, and uh, this part of the game is one of the slower parts of the game because you get some very interesting backstory, um, but this is also one of the most expository segments of the game. Um, as long as the little tea session was with Mason. Um, this one's longer. And it takes place over the course of, like, maybe two hours. And I'll try to go through it as quickly as possible. It's, I, I can't skip it, because if you're watching this for the actual plot, um, holy shit, does this cover some very important things and give you some actual backstory. Because at this point, you only really know... You only really know what's going on with... The, the general story. Basically, what's been going on in the past, like... Year or so, and what's happening now. And you're basically, like, up to this point... Like, the, the, the underground raid of the, uh, of the uh, Bart's secret base is really kind of the point where the story actually takes off 
because that's the point where Faye decides what he's going to be doing and who he's going to be helping. Um, and now that you have that, and you basically have a direction for the main character, that is where you end up getting uh, to the point where you can actually receive this backstory. Every, I feel like everything up to that point, however many hours, what is it, like four or five hours, is just world building at that point. World building and getting to know the characters. Which... Like, honestly, isn't that big of a deal for a JRPG. This is Nissan, by the way. It's very beautiful. Um, for a JRPG... Is... Especially for the time, about on par with um, <clears throat> how long it takes you to do world building and blah, blah, blah. Because, like, I would compare this to Final Fantasy VII, where in Final Fantasy VII, the first thing you do is blow up a Mako reactor, and you get a little bit of world background that here's this company um, that's killing the planet by using its life force to basically power cities and military stuff. Um, and the entire Midgar arc is just world building. You're introduced to your main characters, uh, you get a little bit of background on everybody, um, and then the, uh, the finale of the Midgar section, um, you get this basic idea that there's this guy Sephiroth who's seeking the promised land. And this is like four, five, six hours into the game, kind of about the same time you start to get the major plot points or the major direction that the main character is going and your party is going. So it's about the same as like a Final Fantasy. Because at that point you learn about Sephiroth and, and you don't get the information directly, like you don't get the actual information from Cloud. But Cloud says, if Sephiroth is going for this, this is a big fucking problem and we need to take our time to solve it. Um, and so you don't have the whole backstory, you don't have all the information. Um, and you get it pretty much as soon as you leave Midgar. Alright, this is the... Inn, I think. I'll never have to deal with that. I'm gonna check out all these buildings because it's been a while and I want to make sure I don't miss anything. Uh, this one... I can't remember if it's this one or if, it, if it's a different one that's important later. Um... But yeah, the first thing that happens after that is a very long exposition, a background, on why the main bad guy is the main bad guy. Um, and so I feel like Final Fantasy VII and this game kind of parallel each other because they follow kind of the same story structure up to this point, up to this exposition we're about to hit here. Um... And so, I don't, I don't know if this type of storytelling is atypical for other JRPGs of the time, because I only really played this, and like, Metal Gear Solid, and the Final Fantasies from this area. And Final Fantasy VIII does none of this. Final Fantasy VIII, you don't find out anything about the main bad guy until like, the very end of the fucking game. Like, 70% of the way through the game is where you get the fucking plot dump. So I feel like the story structure here is really, really good. Uh, because at, the, at this point, you've basically been... If I would, if I were to compare this in Final Fantasy VII to, like, a, a painting... Um, at this point, you've been given... You've been given your, your, your paints, and you've been given... You know, your... The, the, the board that you mix the thing I don't know fucking anything about art and at this point is where you're going to be given the frame and then you're going to start basically the story starts being painted onto the canvas um, 
I also use the painting allegory because um, that's going to prove to be important here shortly. Uh, let's see. This is the guy I want to talk to. <laughs> Excuse me. Shit. I'm dying. Not really. I just need some water. So, at this point, we can actually um, upgrade our gears here. The uh, armor upgrades are mostly linear for a while. You get to points where you can either get higher um, physical armor or armor that has lower physical but has some more ether defense. Um, and that can become important later. So 9 output and 1800 fuel. The output is how much like damage you can do. Alright, that's 9. I'm going to have to grind out. Oh, can't upgrade that. He's already got that. Alright, Brigandier. Oops. Brigandier should be able to take an upgrade here. Yep. Restore that. Alright, let's see. There's no important parts here for me to buy. The uh, gear weapons are disproportionately expensive. It's nice that the majority of the characters don't have weapons for their gears. There's only one character whose entire damage output is built around their weapons. Um, and he's a really interesting character, because everybody else is kind of samey, but that guy is just like... Let's see, 27, 720, that's what we want. Um, he's really interesting, and he's a really good character to have. Um, but he ends up being underpowered in a lot of sections because of the way his weapons work. But we'll talk about him way later, because we don't run into him until way later. Huh? Oh, this is actually... I'm glad I came here, and I'm glad I did this, because I forgot about this. So I can't tell if they're talking about how it's become more difficult with the increased martial law, or if after we broke into the castle, killed a bunch of guards, and then stole their hostage, they enacted martial law, but, you know. Basically, Ave's bad right now. In fact, I think we physically cannot enter Ave right now. I'm probably wrong. But yeah, anyways. This part's interesting, um, because this is one of the few times in the game where you actually get to talk to people, or you get to see how people who aren't connected with the main party and the main plot, and they're connected colloquially, um, kind of just by proximity, um, but... You'll never see any of these characters again. You'll never interact with any of them again. But it's really interesting to see, like, a town council that, you know, has a stake in this war and all this stuff that's going on uh, is dealing with what's going on with the main plot. And you learn that what what's going on in the world is actually now, just by, just by what we did in the castle, starting to affect everyone else in the world. And this is one of... God, this might be the only time you get to see something like that. And this area is important. This town, this city, is important in that regard because this is the seat of the Nissan religion, um, which was connected by blood to the Fatima dynasty. But because it's a religion, 
uh, what's his face? Uh, Shikan can't just come in and throw everybody out. Or at least he couldn't up to this point. Uh, because this area is like one of the main areas of open resistance against his regime. Um, but at this point, we've also learned that he's killing, you know, abducting and killing major members of the religion um, in order to att obtain his goals. So he's getting desperate. Very good, interesting political stuff. I like I like the intricacy of the stories and the politics built in with these stories. Final Fantasy VII is a much simpler story. It's literally there's some background shit that happened, and now you're doing this, and that's pretty much it. All right, so there's a couple other things we need to see and do. There's a cool little walk around over there we can do later, but. We need to continue on with the story here. These are the people who took care of me when I was small. And we need to talk to him. We're gonna come hang out. Oh! It's popped my fucking chest. My freaking sternum popped. Results of a car accident a long time ago. I can now pop my sternum like you pop your knuckles or something. It's just super annoying. I must hurry and see the sisters. So, now we get to go and check out the main church. Which is very important, actually to, one, the overall themes of the game, but it's important what's going on in this church, in this cathedral, to the larger <clears throat> uh, plot. In fact, a lot of the things, um, a lot of the stuff that this religion is based around revolve around the actual story of the plot and mirror some of the things that have happened in the plot that we don't uh, that we don't know yet. So, if you're getting bored of sitting through the religious exposition that we're about to deal with here, um, it is important to the larger plot. You should hang out and check it out. How nice. Everybody's happy. Big happy reunion. Oh, need some painkillers, man. When I'm done with it, I'm going to fucking take a billion milligrams of ibuprofen. Sister Agnes. Agnes. They know. So, one of the interesting things <clears throat> about this religion is that due to their connection with the royal family, um, Margie and her mother and her grandmother are considered the leaders of this religion by birth. Um, and I can't think of any religious parallels in the real world where that's the case. You know, the, the Pope of Catholicism, of Christianity. The Pope doesn't have a kid, and then the kid is automatically going to be the next Pope or anything like that. Um, <clears throat> I find it interesting. Um, it has to do, in this case, it has to do with the Fatima Jasper. Um, and basically, <laughs> the female leaders of this religion need to... basically pair with the male members of the Fatima dynasty in order to create the Fatima Jasper. 
Um, which is why, in this case, that's the case. But um, I can't. Th I can't think of any other. I can't think of any real world allegory that's like that. And this is the only religion in this game that is like that. Um, which is very interesting to me, I think. Of course something's wrong. <laughs> She's just been re rescued from a traumatic hostage experience. Her parents were murdered. I feel like that's a mistranslation. She hasn't put up with enough. She's been through too much. Cool. Now we get to explore a cathedral. Let's go. I agree with you 100%, Satan. There probably are a few things you could learn from her. Alright, so this is the cathedral. This camera angle sucks. Uh, this part also kind of sucks. <laughs> because we have to follow her up the stairs and she walks, so we just have to walk. We can't go over her. If we run into her, she stops. So we just kind of have to walk up this gigantic flight of stairs. <clears throat> then again, she's giving us a tour, so that's kind of understandable. So now we're getting a little bit of a better view of the cathedral itself from the viewing gallery up here. And Satan is just blown away. But Faye's an idiot, so Faye doesn't get to really appreciate the majesty of it all. Like, sometimes I feel like Faye's a good protagonist, and you get to points like that especially later. And sometimes he's just like fucking Tidus from Final Fantasy X. Where the only words out of his mouth are like, Hungry! Thorg want eat! It's not actually the words coming out of his mouth, but you get what I'm saying. Just kind of taking everything in quietly. How pretty is that for rudimentary 3D models? And with the way the light comes through. It's actually a really cool way to use 3D space and lighting. Because now from this perspective, you see it <clears throat> with the pillar of light shining down and all the majesty of it. This part, this part's kind of a mistranslation because she refers to this as a legend. However, this is one of the founding principles of her religion. So I don't think you would call it a legend. That's like saying the legend of Buddha. It's like, no, it's dogmatic fact. Well, yeah, it's dogmatic fact. So I don't think you would call it. Pay attention to what Saiten's saying here. It's important. Saiten, Satan. Fuck me. I will never pronounce it the way y'all want me to pronounce it. Just give up. Satan, the only intellectual in the room. The space between them is the path from our god advance. Isn't this, like... 
Like, so this is just conjecture on his point, on his part, at this point. However, he's pretty much hitting the nail on the head. And Bart and Faye are just looking at each other like, I don't understand! Want eat meat? Go bathroom, fall asleep, fight! I watched Showgirls for the first time um, the other night with my wife, and you don't learn much about the main character throughout that entire movie, um, but then you get some, I mean, you get a lot of her characterization through the way she acts, but one of the main explicit times you actually get some type of characterization of her is when... She uses a lot of her hard-earned money to purchase a very nice, very tiny, skimpy Versace dress, right? And you have really no background about her. At the very beginning of the movie, she's hitchhiking to Las Vegas. Then she gets to Las Vegas and basically gets helped out by somebody in order to even survive. But then she's she's moving up in the world. She gets hired to be um, one of the dancers in like a showgirls act, and she's talking to all the main big guys, and they compliment her on her dress, and she says, "Yeah, it's Versace." Um, mispronouncing it, showing her level of intelligence, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, um, and her level of knowledge about the world that she lives in, and I feel like. Like, that's a great characterization, and I feel like it's mirrored here. And I'm not saying that they got, you know, inspiration from Xenogears from a movie that came three years before it about, you know, topless women dancing and being terrible to each other in Las Vegas. But, like, the fact that, the, that, at, the fact that at any point in time where there's something either intellectual or requiring any sort of higher level of thought going on. Faye just kind of dismisses it, and so does Bart to a degree. Says a lot about them as characters compared to characters like Satan, who's like, he's all for the intellectual shit. Um, I just think that's really interesting, that like, that's our main character. And it, you know, it has to be. You can't have a main character that knows everything um, unless they're doing the explaining. And they do it with, like, the uh, uh, another good example from this point, this time period. Let's go in here really quick and talk to one or two people. Or there's nobody here. Yep. We can talk to them later. Whoops. Um... Fuck, what was I just saying? Oh yeah, Metal Gear Solid. So, in Metal Gear Solid, um, your main character is a character by the name of Solid Snake, who is this legendary veteran um, special ops dude, um, who at the beginning of the game had been retired in Alaska, staying as far away from people as possible for as long as possible. Um... Just disillusioned by all the war he's seen and blah, 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 blah. And probably suffering from some pretty fucking serious PTSD. Um, and that is the... Uh, that is the justification for him being a complete fucking idiot throughout the entire game. Um, and it's down to it's down to a point where... Um, it's like lampoonable at this point. Where where Snake doesn't know anything about anything. And I'm sure if we ever get to it in the Metal Gear recollection, I'll probably say the same thing. But Faye basically has to have all the plot and all the backstory explained to him because he's a he's a he's a uh, he's a stand-in for the player who doesn't know any of this stuff and has to have it explained. So the the basic outline Why isn't it letting me Click the fucking thing. Oh, wow, that was weird. It switched away. That's not good. Um, sorry about that, y'all. 
um, is basically he's talking on the codec to somebody and they say, oh yeah, this only happened because something, 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 term. And then Snake's reply is always, term? And then he has the term explained to him. Um, and that's that's kind of a, a, a classic trope of games is, is like, especially in JRPGs, where they give the main character amnesia so that the whole world can be explained to them. Um, it makes sense. It's still annoying, especially once you've played through a game like this and then you're stuck with the guy where it's like, okay, I'm 100%. I'm ahead of all the characters. And so having to have this explained to these characters is understandable for where they are, but where I am, you know. The nice thing about skippable cutscenes, but in a JRPG, usually you can't skip cutscenes. I mean, these older ones, you can. Um, and, like, I feel like later on they do a good job of making it so that he's not just this complete idiot for the entirety of the game. Um... Because once Faye get, gets answers, he usually, especially later on in the game, like 40 to 50% of the way through the game onward, once he gets an answer to a problem, he acts on it intelligently and quickly, and in most cases correctly, and you don't always get that with a lot of characters. Um, one example I would say would be probably Cloud from Final Fantasy VII, where he doesn't really understand all of what's going on until about, um, God, maybe 70-80% of the way through the game. And then at that point, it's just like, like it doesn't change the path that he's on. It answers some questions, but it doesn't give him guidance to the to, to what he's going to be doing. Whereas with Faye, when he gets an answer to a question he has or something like that, um, oftentimes he, he will then alter what's going on or he will change his, you know, perspective or change how he approaches something. Um, and I feel like you don't get that a lot with a lot of other characters. So I feel like overall he's probably a stronger main character. Despite some of his flaws being way worse than a lot of other, you know, main characters you get in JRPGs and other games at the time. Just because that's how he handles it. One of the ways that Snake overcomes this is, yeah, he's a big dumbass throughout all of Metal Gear Solid. But then you don't play as him in Metal Gear Solid 2. And he becomes basically like this sage guru sensei to the main character who knows fucking everything. And he's never cooler than he is at that point. Probably. Um, yeah. I hope I'm not rambling too much here. Anyway, so that is a painting of the founding... Uh, mother of Nissan, the Great Mother, and it's it's just Ellie, which they covered, um, and now we want to know, but they don't know anything about it. Also, it's strange that she's the founding mother, and yet these people who are now the 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 leaders of this church don't seem to have any. What's the word I'm looking for? They don't seem to have any any like blood relation to him. To her, I should say. Um, so more questions. More questions being raised here. Uh, none of these will be answered for a very long time. Like, I, this game does a really good job of raising questions, answering other questions, and then waiting a long time to answer the questions that they raised. So, like, this stuff won't be answered until... Also, what the fuck's going on here? Uh, some sort of crazy hallucination. La Khan. Uh, these questions won't be answered until, like, 20 to 30 hours from now. Maybe more. Probably more. This game's a long one. It's nothing! Alright, now we can move around normally. And now we've gone through this big plot dump here. Or 
I shouldn't even call it a plot dump. It's a questions dump. No, let me through the... There we go. God damn it. All right. And I think that uh, this should be where we end this for the day because we've been going for a little over an hour at this point. So thanks, you guys, for coming out and hanging out for another episode of Xeno Gears. Um, I went off on way too many tangents. And hopefully you didn't hate that too much. And I will see you guys next time. Goodbye!